Hi, I'm Dr Ray Middleton and in this film I'm going to explain what a psychologically informed environment or PI is and show you how easy it is to become a PI champion or PI lead within your service or organisation. I'm also going to show you how to create a PI self-assessment for a service using the Pizzazz self-assessment tool created by Robin Johnson. You can get additional information downloaded for free around this PI self-assessment from PyLink.net. Once you've gathered views from your staff on where the service is currently at in terms of PI, you can type up your self-assessment report either into a Word document or onto some software called iAbacus. iAbacus allows larger organisations to reflect on their PI data for several services at once to gain, to gain a better, bigger perspective on the whole organisation in terms of PI. But you don't need to use iAbacus, you can just type up your self-assessment for Pi into a Word document. The upgraded Pi version 2 has five categories to assess your service around. These are psychological awareness, training and support, learning and inquiry, the three R's, that's the rules, roles and responsiveness, and the fifth Pi area is spaces of opportunity. Once you've defined a pie area, ask people to think about where, how they'd rate the service at the moment on a, some sort of scale from poor, basic, progressing or advanced. Ask them what evidence they have to support this score, which validates any good work you're doing already and, and you get that down. But also say, well, what helps us to improve in this area? And you can highlight and uh, value different points of view about what people think is helpful. Ask people what hinders in this area and what makes it difficult to progress and that's really important to tap in to value the points of view of all staff members here about what makes it difficult to progress and finally ask people to come up with a realistic plan to improve in this area so you're co-producing a plan. Remember to explain to the staff team what the category means so they know what they're assessing the service on. So next I'm going to define each pie category to check our understanding by opening up a dialogue with Robin Johnson. The next pie area is learning and inquiry. In this area, consider to what extent there is a learning culture in your service. Learning may include reflective practice sessions, service user consultation, action learning sets, developing evaluations, generating service data, working with researchers to explore aspects of practice in some more depth, informing policy making at a local or national level. In this area, consider the following questions. How is reflective practice encouraged in your service? To what extent would you describe your service as a learning organisation? Is there a culture of inquiry or a culture of blame? Does the data you produce get fed back to staff and service users in ways that make sense to reflect on? So there's a, a, a loop with the data that gets set, sent back and we can learn from it. Or is, uh, is the data set, sent into a, a kind of black hole which you never hear back from? How far are you able as a service to participate in the wider learning and inquiry across your sector? in communities of practice, online or face-to-face. -face. So are you connecting with wider learning, whatever service you are? How far do you participate in wider learning at a national level through conferences, webinars, things like that, or get involved in producing publishable research? That's exactly how I'd, uh, how I'd spelled it out there. I suppose the thing I wanted to do there was to say, when we first started talking about what are the key themes in a psychologically informed environments. Um, one of the ideas that we talked about was evidence generating practice, which mm. um, people started then put on the pedestal as, oh, you know, you're supposed to be writing up stuff in journals and so on. Well, you know, psychologists tend to live in the world where they write stuff in journals. The vast majority of people don't. So you couldn't make that one of the key things. Mm. I wanted there to be somewhere where reflective practice was part of the model because it's so central. Mm. So putting it into a broader context of, well, on the one end, yes, you might even be working with, you know, the specialist researchers 
to to develop a you know a paper or to discuss some particular aspect of the work the work you're doing mm -hmm. and right on the other end you've got um just a somebody who says my door is always open if you've got a bit of a problem you know or somebody who manages by walking about in the way that that dwp manager did mm -hmm. that was a lovely example of using the physical space and using her role to be responsive and to provide therefore the flexible support people need mm -hmm. so to put all that together into one big thing was much more about the culture of the organization and you could spell it out in terms of reflective practice. You could spell it out in terms of encouraging research. You could spell it mm. out in terms of encouraging your staff to go and talk with other people and attend a conference or yeah, yeah. go and, and give feedback, feedback what they're here to so the rest. Of in in the end, putting the whole thing together as a kind of big umbrella category of learning. <laughs> learning as an organization encouraging your staff to learn and having an inquiring attitude but the thing about the the difference between a culture of inquiry and a culture of blame mm -hmm. that i find is a phrase that just people go oh yeah 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 culture of blame culture of learning mm -hmm. definitely and that, that that and you want to shift it more this way, obviously, you know, like uh, once you've uh, established this kind of questions in people's minds to think, well, uh, you know, are we here to learn and, uh, and learn from our mistakes as well as what works and, and learn from a bit of theory and research as well as learning from the experts by experience? There's all different ways we can learn. Yeah. And I think uh, yeah. it's a really good topic. And to, to my mind, learning is different from training. Training is where there's somebody up there with a body of knowledge or skills or whatever, and they're going to impart mm. that to you because because you said you've invited them to come and give that training. So you said yeah, this yeah. Mm. learning is when you're learning from your own experience, or when the organisation is learning from its own experience. To my mind, that's the best. That's the most important learning. It, it can, <laughs> You know, it can it can end anecdotal, so you can say, "Well, we did this. Well, we did something different." You know, you can't. It's not it doesn't lend itself to research and to endless consistency in the same in the same way. But to my mind, that's the most valuable learning of the lot. Definitely, and that's where learning, I think, and that's where reflective practice is really important. And particularly, I think, just experiencing things in it doesn't make people learn things. Because you can have, sometimes have a member of staff who's got quite burnt out 10 years ago and they're not really learning. They're contributing quite negative attitudes and they've got lots of experience of getting people coming in and out of service. But it's the reflective practice where you uh, look at what's happened and, and reflect and get different points of view and be willing to say, well, what, what's gone well, but what's not gone so well? And that we can learn together. So you need to reflect, I find, in order to learn from experience. It's not just literally turning up to work every day for 20 years. That means you learn things. I think you have to have some kind of culture of being curious and encouraging that kind of openness to, uh, to be have a, have a conversation about what do you think, what does someone else think, introducing new ideas. You know, do, do you get the sense of what I'm trying to say there? Is I think I, I, learning is just I, I, a case. I do, but I, I, think I've, I think I've got more time for that kind of burnt out guy who doesn't learn anything new. He's become a hard bitten and disillusioned and endlessly carping and critical. You know, we need people like that too. You need somebody who's going to express this kind of, you know, emperor's got no clothes, all this bloody new psychologically modern environment. I don't know. You, know, mm -hmm. you really want people like that as, as part of the discussion too. You know. Oh, definitely. You want to introduce people, but I think. Yeah, why don't uh, do this? Well, you know, that's a good question. That's a really good definitely. question. You know, that's yeah. what to start with. And I just think that I definitely want to introduce them into the conversation. Um, but I just think without somebody encouraging reflection and learning, new members of staff will just soak up the negative, sometimes. Uh, attitudes of people who who got burnt out really and and uh, so I think just think you do need to ask that question about how are we learning as we go along from new things there might be some new ideas that have come along in the last 15 years that are helpful uh, in, you know useful about um, some approaches that might be useful so I do think yeah I just said I think it's good that you've got that theme uh, and that might help people who are a bit uh, burnt out which happens a lot and get stuck
so we've we've covered all the five um, main things, and then, I, I'm I'm hoping that what I've managed to convey, or what we what between us we've brought mm. out, is that those five big areas that everything overlaps into everything else, everything feeds into everything else, Definitely, but yeah. clustering in five areas like that mm. kind of kind of seem to work. It it works well enough to get the discussion going and to get people looking at how all the different threads. The, the last newsletter I sent out, um, I sent out on May Day for one mm -hmm. week. And I used this image of a maypole, this, you know, mm -hmm. all, the wow. all interweave. I, 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 that's kind of doing, I think we're, we're, we're kind of producing maypole services where all these different issues. Yeah. To tw dance around each other and form something really rather. They definitely do. They interact. So I think that's the advantage is they're well thought out over about a decade now. Uh, areas that are worth self assessing. And mm -hmm. someone can go away and talk to the staff team and on post it notes and, 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 and flip chat paper and see where you think you're at in, in each area and say what you're doing now that, that supports that, but also what helps and hinders you getting better. But also then come up with a realistic plan to get a little bit better in each area. The, the, one, the one thing I would say though, as we, oh, we seem to be moving towards wrapping this up, um, it's not fixed in stone. I hope it never will be. I hope it mm. can finish to learn mm. and grow. Um, what I wanted to do by setting up the planning as, as a website was to encourage more and more communication and dialogue and narrative and so on. We're going to try again make another attempt to get sort of webinars and forums going going there so i think we need to encourage people to self-assess they can use that pizzazz self-assessment framework there's free there's loads of free stuff on pilot.net that they can download and then there's the uh, the software which allows large organizations uh pizzazz. yeah I, i'm hopeful at the moment i'm cautious always but i'm mm. hopeful that, that will give us something that really moves us up a notch, moves us up again. Yeah. Something that the commissioners can use, something that large organisations can use, something that researchers can use to get a much, much bigger overview, and particularly of where the gaps and the blockages are. Definitely. I mean, well, I've been very impressed with using it with services to put onto, you know, being able to run reports about where services feel they're at in each of those five pie areas, and their plans uh, to get better, what helps and hinders. Large organisations can then run reports and see where there's common themes and where to put resources to help staff and yeah. services to improve. So I, I'm, I've been very impressed with it, to be honest. I think it's got a lot of potential, particularly for larger organisations. Lovely bit of software, isn't it? The, the guys who, yes. who originally did, that, did, that, did a brilliant um, What we've done is, is adapt and customise it to our particular world to take it out of education. I'd, I'd encourage people to, if you want to, you can do the pen and paper version and self-assess your service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine. And write up a a report on a word document but um it's well worth popping that data into uh the, the pizzazz software because it just makes it look nice in a report as well presentable but you can then compare and contrast and if we are serious about system change about mm. saying back to the way the systems don't work together they create yeah. half, of the com half the difficulties of people with complex mm. needs then then it's great to have individual services looking at their own work and looking at where they fit mm. into the whole service, but there's got to be a way that up here... We need to connect them. We need to connect them. Get that yeah. overview, and that's what I think the software will help, will help us to do. Definitely, definitely. I think so. So, Robin, I'm going to draw it to a close now. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, co-deliver this training with me, <laughs> as ever. Good to talk to you. Um, and I just, just want to say thank you for all your work you've done over the years developing Pi. Oh, uh, Ray, I would do the same same to you. You know, you've, you've been one of the key players, both in developing the ideas in the first place, because you and I, I remember going back to that place in Leeds when I first found myself, place 15 years ago, where I first found myself saying, there ought to be a word for this. We need, we need to describe this. There's something brilliant going on here that no one's actually described. And that was the place you took me to. So, you know, you... Right. It started there. It all started. Actually, it did. It started here. For me. <laughs> the the, 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 the ambition to put it in words and to sort of bottle it. Start it started. And you, you, you found an awful lot of effort into that. So thank you. We appreciate it. And uh, just encourage people to have a go. Self-assess around where you're at a pie. And we can get better services, can get better staff, can get better the people, 
uh, we're serving uh, with complex needs can get better. So we can all get better together. And make it work for you. Don't, don't, you, you know, you're not working for the assessment. Tailor it, Tailor it to you. Great. Thank you, Robin. Take care, Ray. Once you've defined a pie area, ask people to think about where, how they'd rate the service at the moment on a, some sort of scale from poor, basic, progressing or advanced. Ask them what evidence they have to support this score, which validates any good work you're doing already and, and you get that down. But also say, well, what helps us to improve in this area? And you can highlight and uh, value different points of view about what people think is helpful. Ask people what hinders in this area and what makes it difficult to progress. And that's really important to tap in to value the points of view of all staff members here about what makes it difficult to progress. And finally, ask people to come up with a realistic plan to improve in this area. So you're co-producing a plan. So now you should have a rating in each pie area and you should be able to say what helps and hinders in each area and what you're currently doing now and your plans to improve in each area. You can repeat the pie self-assessment 12 months later to see what progress you've made against the plans that you made to progress. You can either type up your assessment on a Word document or to use the iAbacus, there's more information at iabacus.co.uk forward slash pi. I hope you've enjoyed this training as well as learning a lot. Once you've got your baseline pi self-assessment, there's a range of other training I can offer to help improve services in each pi area. To find out more about what I can offer, just drop me an email at ray.middleton at ladderforlife.com. Thank you, everybody.